This is our research assignment titled Interview with a Dead Artist. And the idea of this came because of a image I saw by Douglas Sirios of Andy Warhol as a zombie with some killer clowns in the background. And I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if instead of doing our boring, regular old research assignment, that students think of the artist as a living person that they could actually interview. This has helped in avoiding a lot of plagiarism issues because once you start writing in the first person, we have less of an issue with, with plagiarism. So this packet is available in our workbooks uh, around page 120. Um, it's black and white in here, um, but the packet I'm gonna be showing you is the same one uh, in front of here. So we're going to use an example of Van Gogh as our interview. And again, this really isn't the um, top page for the interview. This one would be our example research paper. Because I'm gonna be showing this for Van Gogh, um, I'm going to tell my students that they are not allowed to use Van Gogh as their research assignment. So as we go into the packet, which I will link you to uh, in the description below, I have a list of some dead artists. There are thousands of artists who have passed away over history. These are just a short list. I would encourage students, if you know of an artist that is not on this list, to maybe choose that artist. They must be famous enough that their work should be in several museums. You can't just choose your uncle because you like to paint. It has to be an artist uh, who is fairly famous and in museum collections. So this is not to be considered a complete list. So the scenario is the idea that the dead have come back to life again and you'd think the government would be on high alert, schools would be closed and there would be chaos everywhere. But no, unlike pop culture zombie movies, these dead folks are just as normal as they ever were, ever were except partially decayed, but all in all the same. Most zombies have happily found jobs at McDonald's and Walmart. So this is the little story to kind of get us started. And then I have the document set up. When I do this, I do this in um, Google Docs and I set up a, um, a blank page that has the one inch margins, 12 point font, something simple like Arial, Calibri, or New Times Roman, uh, a cover page with first name, last name, period, and the artist name. Each question and answer should not have a blank space between them. New questions can have a blank space and include an example of the artist's work on the last page and label it and a bibliography on the last page under every photo. Uh, or under the last photo. So my bibliography, because this is an art class and not an English class, is just collecting the websites that you have gotten information from. I'm okay if Wikipedia is one source that you use, but it cannot be your only source. And we start the interview with an introduction. So I have a simple one here just as an example, but you can pretend that you are doing this as a television interview, a radio interview, a magazine interview, um, and kind of have some fun with it to be creative. But it should start with an introduction because that's the polite thing to do. I'm pleased to present to you this interview with Vincent Van Gogh, who was born on blank, sadly died on blank. They worked in a style of art called, well, his was post-impressionism in the country of, well, he worked a lot in France. So I list 50 possible questions and that's way too many. Um, most students can actually do this research paper with about oh, 10 to 15 questions, um, but I give you lots of ideas and I'm actually gonna show you a way to kind of cheat uh, and get this done fairly quickly. The first five questions and the last are mandatory. And the first five questions are what everybody should be including in a research paper anyway. Tell me a bit about your family and childhood. What kind of art do you like to create? All you have to do is a Google search of the artist and then click on images and you'll see 20, 30, 40, or more images. So you can kind of talk about the kind of art they create. Is it painting, drawing, sculpture, printing? What is it? Kind of describe the subject matter, uh, the genre, whatever you can. Um, and then this will be a fairly long answer. Um, what do you think makes your work unique or special? So as you look at the work, why is it different from every other artist? What is your most famous work of art? So you can go ahead and describe it. That's the image you'll include at the end of your report. Um, and it'll probably be the first, second, or third image in a Google search of the artist's work. What was going on in the, t in the world at the time that you were an artist? So you had 20 years to their birth year and you can find important historical events that were going on around that time because artists are often influenced by what's going on in the world. And this helps tie us into history. 
The other questions are pretty general. Um, you can pick and choose, but again, I'm gonna show you a way to kind of get through that quickly. And then the last one is very easy, actually. What words of wisdom would you like to end this interview with? And then all you have to do is copy and paste a quote that the artist actually said. And if you can't find a quote by the artist, then find a quote by somebody fairly famous or reputable who talked about the artist, like a museum curator or something. And then I have a rubric on the next page in your workbooks and in this packet. So you can grade yourself before you turn in your project. So in the actual um, research paper, we have uh, what is required. And that is on the front page uh, to have your first and last name, period, the, the name of the artist. And then if you can find a portrait, go ahead and include that. If you can't find one, this is not mandatory. And then we have the actual research paper. And you see there's question and answer are right next to each other. And then there's a space. So when I'm reading this, I know this chunk is one piece of information, this chunk is another piece of information, and so forth as we go through this. And um, to meet the standards that I need on this research paper, um, we have to have three pages uh, to get an A, two pages to get a C. So here we go. Can you tell me a bit about your family and childhood? I was born to a pastor in the Dutch Reformed Church and my mother who came from a prosperous family. Uh, my childhood was sad, empty and cold, and I was often away from home feeling loneliness. You could actually expand on this and talk as though you were Van Gogh and how that might feel, and then the answer would actually be, you know, a bit longer. Now, um, as you go through and figure out answers uh, and questions uh, that you go through, another way you can approach this is go ahead and just look up the artist and find a page. Now I'm gonna use Wikipedia here, and I could randomly highlight something. So here I've highlighted a statement that says, Van Gogh suffered from psychotic episodes and delusions, and though he worried about his mental, st uh, mental stability, he often neglected his physical health and did not eat properly and drank heavily. So this is some information that's obviously not gonna be a question in the 50 questions because it's very specific. But once you know this piece of information, then you can think about, well, what kind of question does this answer? So you could ask the question, how was your health? Or how were you feeling as an artist? Or did you suffer from any mental issues? You know, I've heard rumors. So you can be conversational that way and then use that information to answer the question. So he could say, well, I did suffer from psychiatric problems. Sometimes they were called delusions and episodes. Um, and I did worry about my mental health. I didn't take care of myself and I didn't eat really well. And I definitely drank too much. Then you could go on and continue and then talk as though you were him and how he might finish that off and say, you know, really the drinking, um, held me back, uh, it made me uh, more psychotic, more delusional, uh, I wish that I never got into that, I should have gotten some help. So you can kind of riff on this information, expand it out so that your two sentence reply can then become sort of a mini essay. We find another one here about the essays um, that uh, Van Gogh would write to his brother Theo. So the most comprehensive primary source on Van Gogh is his correspondence between him and his younger brother, Theo, uh, their lifelong friendship, and most known for Vincent's thoughts and theories of art were recorded in hundreds of letters they exchanged from 1872 to 1890. So knowing this, you could ask a question, was there anybody who was supportive or helpful in your life? You could say, yes, my brother, Theo. Uh, we would send letters back and forth where I would talk about art, my thoughts and my feelings, and he would reply with his own thoughts and help uh, me. He supported me financially. He was actually the only person to buy one of my paintings while I was alive. You would find that out by, complete, by reading a little bit more. So again, find some information and then figure out what question you could ask that this information asks. So that's a quick way to kind of get through the research paper. Again, as we go through it, um, the last question should be a quote. Are there some words of wisdom you would like to end this interview with? I put my heart and my soul into my work 
and I have lost my mind in the process. It's kind of a sad quote to live, leave on, but it is there. We have his most famous work, which is Starry Night. We have the uh, materials, which is canvas, oil paint. Um, the size is uh, two foot five inches by three foot, and the year is 1889. And then these are all of the web pages that the student got the information from, all the photos, all the sizes, all of the interview answers and everything. And this can all be turned in. And if we're using uh, Google Docs, you'll need to run an originality report. Check the originality report because sometimes it may flag something, but you have to see what is it flagging. If it's asking a question like, did you have any other jobs? The uh, plagiarism checker might pick up that as a question because it's probably a common question. So you could ignore that. If maybe you have a little bit of a list of information and the plagiarism checker picks up on that, then you could also ignore that. But if your writing seems like it's too much like what was written on a website, you need to fix that and put it in your own words. So do the plagiarism check, the originality report first, check on it, make sure there's no real issues involved in it, and then you can turn your work in uh, for a grade.